The palm of your hand is normally associated with a mind-boggling lapse of judgment. But as a guitar player, it's actually one of our greatest tools, and we're going to demonstrate that with a technique called palm muting. It's going to help with your strumming, your dynamics, everything, right? So we're going to start by using the palm of our hand. And really, we say palm muting, but it's really kind of the side of your hand. And what you're going to do is you're going to kind of judo chop like the bridge of your guitar, right? And now when you lay your palm over that, you're kind of dampening the strings, the tone of your strings with your hand, right? So for example, I'm just going to play a regular G chord and that's sustained, and as long as I hold it with my left hand, it's gonna ring out. Now, if I have my hand, my palm, over the bridge here, see, it's a lot, it's deadened, it's dampened. And it just has like a short burst of a sustain, and you can actually manipulate that depending on how hard you dig in to the bridge with your palm, and how far up you go. See, the farther up I go towards the sound hole, no tone, as I bring it back, starting to get tone, right? So I want to make a quick distinction between muting and palm muting, because I actually, when I first started, I thought they were the same thing. When I'm muting something, like if you're muting a chord, like just take this uh, bar chord, right? Usually what you're doing is you're using your left hand to hold the strings while your right hand hits the strings, whether you're using a pick or your thumb or whatever, like a chord, a sustained chord into a mute. Now, a palm mute is just what we talked about before, where you deaden the strings to kind of give it a change in tone. And the reason it's helpful for, besides just this technique, is it really helps tighten up the stroke of your hand. There's a lot of inefficiencies when you first start playing guitar, and a lot of them are from strumming. That's why a lot of people have a hard time really mastering the strumming kind of business. And, uh, like, for example, when I'm going down and up just on a regular G chord, a lot of people first start playing out like this. And if you look at the inefficiency here, every time I go down, I'm way down here, and there's this much space, there's a lot of space between the high E string where I ended, and then I have to go back up, right? So in a perfect world, you wanna be a really efficient guitar player, and you do that by shortening your stroke. If I don't have to strum all the way down, down here past the string set, I can come back a lot faster. It's actually doubling the amount of time that I have to take to get back up to my root position, right? And that doesn't really sound great. You're not getting a good dynamic. So what you want to start doing is trying to tighten up the stroke of your pick. So it's really just kind of like when you go a downstroke, you're only going as far as the strings you know, exist, right? Now, uh, that can be easier said than done, and the reason that palm muting is really good for that is because it kind of locks and anchors your wrist to the body of the guitar. So if I'm going down, I literally can't go any farther past the strings than this. The extension of my, of my wrist doesn't let me do it. A lot of people tell you that strumming is all in the wrist, and that's not totally inaccurate, but it's actually kind of a combination, especially really intricate strumming. It's a combination of your wrist and your thumb. So for example, when I say uh, the, the thumb, how important that is to strumming and palm muting, let's do that thing where you put your palm, you judo chop the bridge right there, and we're gonna try to rest your pick on the low E string, right? Now, if you try to just use your wrist to come down like that, you'll notice there's a lot of resistance. Now, if you rest the pick there, and you just put some power into your thumb and push it down, you're gonna get a very recreatable distance from where your pick starts and where it ends up. And that's actually what we're going for in muscle memory and control when you're trying to do some intricate strumming stuff, right? So uh, if I push this hard, it's gonna give me three strings. If I push a little bit harder, it's gonna give me four, five, six. So eventually you'll be able to just hit one string, hit two strings, hit three strings, four, five, six, because it's all a repeatable way in which you're using your wrist in combination with the joint of your thumb. See, if you watch my thumb closely there, you can kind of see that I'm bending it just a little bit. So there's not a lot of wrist movement going on here. It's more coming from the thumb, right? And palm muting is something that helps with that. Another great reason to get good at palm muting is because it acts as a dynamic, especially if you're maybe like an acoustic singer-songwriter and you're doing a lot of stuff solo, and maybe you have uh, a song that has the same chords for the verse and chorus. So there's not a lot of dynamic in the composition of the song. You can use palm muting to add a dynamic in the presentation of the song. So for example, let's just take a chord progression like uh, E major to this C major, and 
then down two frets to like a D major type thing, right? So if we were just to play the same thing, sustained strumming. That's the only place that that's really gonna go is that kind of level of volume. So if there's a change, you can actually use this as a volume control. So if you start out with it muted, And then once you open it up, it's gonna sound a lot more exciting. So it's almost kind of like a way to cheat dynamics a little bit if you're a solo performer. I think that a really important part of being really good at strumming is a combination of palm muting and unmuting, and it adds a percussive nature to your playing. So we're gonna take that same C major chord and we're gonna do a little bit of a strumming pattern. And now if you notice the dynamic here, I'm starting with the low part, just really the root note, which is the third fret on the E string. And I'm hitting the root note first, and then I'm kind of getting a little bit more of it on a downstroke, right? It doesn't always have to be, I'm kind of aiming for three strings, but it doesn't always have to be, it's just the lower part of the chord zone. And then you'll notice I kind of jumped off for a second, I sustained it for a little bit on that upstroke, so root, down, those upstrokes, one, two, three, and four, and I'm kind of getting a thing where I'm jumping off to sustain that, because if I just kept it down, that'd be a really dead sound. So root, chord, down, up, up. And all together, it's gonna give you more of a percussive element to that playing. So I'm kind of selectively choking the notes that I want with the palm of my hand, therefore I'm adding more of a, you know, more of an exciting strumming pattern. And you don't always have to just use this with chords. Any kind of scale that you can do, and actually probably the best way to practice this is just taking a scale, like the, the major scale right here. That's sustained, right? Now if I were to try to mute every one of those, Eventually you're gonna get a really good feel for how much you have to dig into a string, where your palm has to be to get the sound that you're going for, and then how far the stroke is to set up for the next string down. And you can go down and up. And uh, all, all of a sudden you'll find yourself being able to hit two strings if you want, three strings if you want, just one, you're gonna be much closer, your pick's gonna be much closer, or your thumb, or however you're choosing to play it, to the strings when you see it. If you see some of the best guitar players ever, a lot of them, unless they're doing something that's very showy, like showmanship style, where they're all over the place, you'll notice that their right hand, or their strumming hand, doesn't seem to be moving a lot, because they're really dialed in to the minutia of uh, the strings, right? So I really think the palm muting is a way to stabilize your wrist, and keep your pick close to the strings, therefore you're making a more efficient strumming pattern, and you're gonna have an easier time, even when you're not muting, when you're just playing like this. Having your pick closer to the strings, and then knowing, building the muscle memory into your wrist and your thumb of how far that stroke is, is gonna help you muted or unmuted whenever you're strumming and playing.